While antibiotics can be life-saving, the side effects of antibiotics can be devastating for a person's health. And to understand a little bit about that can make a big difference to overcoming the side effects of these antibiotics. First of all, you've got to understand that there are situations when antibiotics are really required. Unfortunately though, the estimates in the scientific studies suggest that about 50% of antibiotics are being used when they shouldn't be. And in situations, I'll give you a couple of those later on, that they're no longer effective and again, shouldn't be. So what determines the severity of the side effects? The first is the existing microbiome. If you've got a healthy gut microbiome, it appears from the studies, and, and this is hundreds of studies have gone into compiling this information, but it appears from the existing, the existing microbiome you have will determine the impact it has. So the healthier it is, the better it is. The antibiotic type, and there are dozens and dozens and dozens of them. The duration, the shorter duration, five, six days, three days is better obviously than 10 days or two weeks. Frequency, how frequent do you take them or have those doses of antibiotics? If it's a couple of times a year, then that's really becoming a very, very serious problem. If it's once every six years, simple strategy you can do to minimize it and you get the idea. And then you've got vulnerability. And the main factor in vulnerability is age. And the biggest factor in age is the younger you are, the greater the susceptibility to severe damage. And the unfortunate thing is that we see that the average two-year-old in Western society has, on average, two doses of antibiotics. So that means some of them are getting four or five and others are getting none. And the problem with those two, the frequency of the age means that there can be long lifetime problems associated with it. Very, very serious long lifetime problems associated with it showing up in the literature. So then we've got, okay, so what does it do? Well, the first one is it just disturbs the microbiome and that's the critical factor in here. Your gut microbiome, you know, is a second brain. It's a second lots of thing. It's a second organ in there. It does so much around the body, running and looking after the health and well-being. And it decreases that biodiversity. So you've got 100 trillion microorganisms, and the idea is that there's a thousand different varieties and species and subspecies in there, and the bigger the variety, the better it is. And the antibiotics wipe out about 30% of that. That's what the study show. One dose for five or six days wipes out about 30% of it. And that's a one-off. And some of those may disappear permanently as well. So we've got to think, oh, how are we going to work on getting those back? That's why if you understand a bit, it can make a big difference. So, and, and one of the functions or what it does is, is, it, is it reduces the functions of the gut, in particular, the production of short chain fatty acids. This is really important because it's a short chain fatty acids. One called butyrate, there's another propriate and acetate, feeds the gut wall. And it keeps the gut wall alive and healthy and well. So it means that it functions properly and does everything perfectly. But if this is destroyed, this stops, these stop being produced, and you end up with something called leaky gut. Now, leaky gut isn't a scientific term, but you understand what it means. And it means all the toxins can get through into the body, go around, cause havoc in various parts of the body. In fact, in terms of where it can go, the gut is connected. You've all heard of the gut-brain axis, this one. Well, the gut is actually connected to so many functions and roles in your body. Let's say it's connected to everything is a better way to sum it up. And so when it comes to the brain, we know that antibiotic use, and not following the formula that I'm going to show you, is linked with an increase in mental health as a result. Depression, anxiety, stress, focus, all those, right through to the long-term Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's and dementia. Then you've got the immune function. Your gut is your primary organ for immune function. So any disturbance of the microbiome, which plays a critical role in that, disturbs the immune system. And that means everything from vulnerability to colds, flus. Um, it means your recovery from an accident and injury. And it also means in, in the case where it's probably overdone, ear infections. And the research shows that ear infections are usually caused by things like um, very simple reflux type issues. And if you stop them, you stop the ear infections, but the antibiotics no longer work on ear infections and there are much better strategies to do. Speak to your health professional about that and what can work and does work. But effectively, the more antibiotics you take for ear infections, the more antibiotics you end up having to take because you end up getting more infections. 
It's got the liver and the met metabolic or metabolism axis in there. So uh, antibiotics lead to an increase in obesity, metabolic syndrome, and all those other situations, fatigue and energy related to that. Then you've got all of the, the various gut-related disorders, and that's including reflux, IBS, IBD, SIBO, and constipation have all been linked to the overuse of antibiotics. So the great thing is here, in a moment, you'll find out how you can really multiply the effect of the prebiotics. And of course, the last one here is the skin and the skin acne, skin psoriasis. Often people or kids I know, teenagers are worried about the acne and they take antibiotics to control it. Well, the problem is that sets up a vicious cycle of having to take the antibiotics to keep it under control because the antibiotics disturb the gut microbiome. And what we should be doing is fixing the microbiome from the start. So the great thing here is you now have an understanding and I'm going to show you what you can do along with prebiotics and probiotics and all these other biotics to make a huge difference so that you don't have these side effects and these things going on in your body. If you have to take antibiotics, you take the antibiotics. You follow the instructions of your health professional. There is no doubt about that. The great thing is that you can reduce the impact they have on your gut microbiome and your health by following the steps I'm outlining. And the great thing is this is so much more, so much more than just taking probiotics. The studies overwhelmingly show, although there's not many studies in each of these areas, there is the studies on this, this and that. And, and I've put together this puzzle so that you can have the best and most current information. The first and foremost thing you do is you've got to reduce the additional stresses on your gut, gut microbiome. And these include all the things I've been talking about for decades in terms of antibacterial wipes. Please stop using antibacterial surface sprays and wipes. You don't need them in 99% of the situations and not at the supermarkets. And all they do is contribute to dysbiosis in your gut microbiome and in your skin microbiome. Um, food additives uh, play havoc, play havoc with um, the gut microbiome. Iron is known to reduce the effectiveness of um, uh, antibiotics and so on and make them more toxic as a result. So you get rid of iron, uh, sugar, gluten, and lifestyle factors like stress and um, just the negative aspects of our life can play havoc with our microbiome as well. So please watch the other videos I've done on the gut microbiome. I don't want to, I won't go into it in any detail. So what do you do then to enhance the benefits? So that one is just looking after your microbiome. What do you do to enhance the benefits? Because the studies show that if you do stuff pre, during, and post, it works much better than just doing them after. So we've got the prebiotics, and the prebiotics are the foods that feed the gut microbiome. And some of you would have heard of the prebiotics, and you've got a symbiotic, which is a mixture of a prebiotic and a, a, and a probiotic. But what you add in here is some K fiber and a mixture of fibers that you can get from the supermarket. The idea of fibers is to just get as many as possible because the gut, the major food for the gut microbiome to create the biodiversity is the biodiversity of fibers, which is the main food for the gut. So it's pretty, it's pretty standard that if you want good microbiome, you're gonna feed them. It's no good taking probiotics and probiotics if you're not feeding them when they get down there on the way down and the good ones you've already got. So before you even take the antibiotics, you establish a better microbiome by having the prebiotics and you have them regularly and daily and it becomes a part of your regular routine and in life, like it is for mine. Then you go on to this new category I call Nutribiotics. It hasn't been given a name yet, but it's essentially the other things that help with the growth of the bacteria, the good bacteria in your gut. And again, these can all, all of these can be taken with antibiotics as well. Get this? So with, the studies show it's a benefit when they're taken with, before, with, and after. So the, the methods, these nutribiotics are your vitamins, vitamin C, A, uh, sorry, C, E, and K, which are beneficial for your gut microbiome, help protect them. And when you've got negative, uh, the wrong type of balance in your gut microbiome, you produce oxidation and inflammation. And those vitamins are fantastic reversing that damage. So it helps keep those healthy microbiome. And then melatonin shows up repeatedly in gut health and in helping with the damage caused by antibiotics. So melatonin, and that's a big one I frequently talk about. 
And there, look, there are no specific supplements I recommend. You check out the ones you can get online. So it's simple, and they use three to six milligrams of melatonin in the studies for sleep, and they use it for all these other things. Melatonin has so many benefits, but particularly with the gut and rebuilding the gut microbiome after, as well as after um, antibiotics. And then you've got omega-3. So these are your fish oils. Fish oils are pretty standard, easy to come by, and they show that they protect, help protect the gut microbiome by providing with an, a slight energy source, but also reducing the oxidation and inflammation. So we go then onto the phytobiotics, and the phytobiotics are, are a new expression, but it's all those um, are great big nutrients that they get in your grapes. You've heard of them, grapeseed extract and uh, um, uh, resveratrol, which I've listed up here. The two that jumped out in the studies, most of all, were one called resveratrol, which is the one in red wine, but you have to have 300 glasses of it to get a daily dose. So there's no real benefit of uh, trying to get a red wine. Uh, you can get it as a supplement and coercetin, which you can get as a supplement as well. And you find that in high concentrations in onions. So probably worthwhile starting to eat a few onions for you to help reduce the damage by antibiotics. No studies, but it probably wouldn't have, wouldn't hurt. So these polyphenols, um, uh, turmeric, there's a, there's a study being done right now on turmeric and ameliorating the effects of antibiotics. And when they start the studies, they already know the outcome. So the message is turmeric, or the active ingredient curcumin too. So you add those in. Foods, herbs and spices are rich in these phytobiotics. Uh, these are, phyto means plant, so plant-based things that help your probiotics. Um, and herbs and spices are the real winners there. Lots of veggies, nuts and seeds, absolutely. But add a few herbs and spices. Check out all my other videos on, on eating healthily and what you can do to build the microbiome. And then finally, postbiotics. <clears throat> and the postbiotics, refer to the breakdown or, or the, um, I suppose, the metabolic compounds released from the good bacteria in your gut. And the main one that they reduce or, or release is called butyrate. And the studies actually show that you can have a butyrate supplement to help reduce the effect of antibiotics. So you can get one called tributyrin, a fantastic product. Um, and, it, it, and go online to check it out. And it's a source of butyrate and butyrate heals the gut wall, reduces inflammation, heals the gut wall and helps with the good bacteria. It's a, again, a, one of those win-win situations. And while there are no studies, probably vinegar because it produces the same type of products, uh, what are called short chain fatty acids, is something that you can add in to help with your gut microbiome while, before, while and after antibiotic. Then we get onto the, wow, probiotics. And everyone says, well, you know, can you take the probiotics during the antibiotics? And the answer is, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Um, does it have an effect on the antibiotics? Not as far as the research shows. So you can take the probiotics beforehand to help build up your microbiome. You can also take them during, which helps protect them and re-inoculate them. And then after. Now, the thing about, the thing about probiotics is that they don't, they're not there to replace all the good ones. They just help create an environment in there. They're like the gardener that goes in there and clears out some of the weeds so that the other good ones can come back. Things like acomensia, um, one called acomensia mucinophilia. And it comes back once you reintroduce these good species. And these are the ones that have been shown up on the, in the studies to actually reduce the negative impact on the microbiome and on the health consequences, which you already know about, of antibiotics. And again, remember, you can take them with, you can take them with, and you can take them at, they're extremely safe profile, so you can take a little bit extra as well. And the studies actually show that you're better off taking a mixture rather than a single variety or species of probiotic. So instead of just selecting this like um, Lactobacillus acidophilus, which is probably the most common one you would get, you would take with three or four other ones. And they've shown, so working down here, this is a fungi. Now this is a great one to take and it can you can get it as a supplement online or at the local health food store. And Saccharomyces is a mold, so it's not actually a, a fungi. It's not actually affected by the uh, antibiotics because antibiotics kill bacteria, not viruses, not fungi, they kill bacteria. So these antibacterials um, won't affect this. So you can take these, 
knowing that that's not gonna have any impact. And these are great for re-establishing good gut health. And it's called Saccharomyces boulardii or Saccharomyces cerevisiae. And both of these have shown up in the studies, both jointly and in combinations with any of these, lots of these other ones. So there are, there are dozens and dozens of studies which use different combinations. And so then we go to the lactobacillus, the common ones you typically get in yogurt, and you don't get enough in your normal yogurt, okay? You don't, you've got to supplement extra. So Acidophilus, KZI, Rhamnosus, Ruterii, Paresi, uh, Lactus, these are all the lactobacillus bacteria that you can get. And you can get them all as probiotics. And the way I understand the scientific literature is you don't need any specific one, just in, in a sense, almost a comb combination, but. If you look for the top three or so, mix it in with this one and or any of these and you're on the right track. The thing is, as I said, the combination of having three or four or five different ones and doing all this other stuff that I've got here. And then we go on the bifidobacteria. And again, another common one everyone's heard of, bifidobacterium. And animalis, bifidus, longum, and lactus, the common ones you can get as a supplement. There are other ones that they use that haven't come out as supplements yet, so I didn't put those ones up. And uh, a, a different type of bacteria, again, if you can get one with one or two of these and one or two of these and one or two of these, fantastic. Or mix and match your supplements a little bit in terms of these. Their safety profile is extremely high. It's very, very safe. Bacteria, uh, bacillus coagulin. Um, uh, these, these are a different type of bacteria and have been shown to be effective. And then you've got fermented foods and drinks down the bottom. There are studies showing that if you have some of the fermented foods and drinks, um, uh, things like homemade kombuchas or kombuchas and other ones made from fermented dairy products, but uh, with a high level of colony forming units. That's the critical thing. So you're going for the doses, a combination of these and the doses, some fermented foods, and then you're looking at all the various lifestyle and other factors in there that are going to play a role. The whole idea of this is not to just get the benefits of the probiotics, but to multiply that by 10 times by doing all these other ones. If you like this video, please subscribe and share it with other people because everybody has antibiotics. And I'd like this information to get out so we can help a lot of people.